On one second, Joe, before we get to that, I hear that we have Governor Brad Little down at GOP headquarters standing by with there Doug and Morgan. We'll send it over to you guys right now. That's right, Brian. We are standing here with the projected winner of the Republican primary. Of course, these results aren't official, Governor, but, well, how are you feeling right now? I feel great. And then um, <laughs> anything surprise you that, this, that, that. that it was called you know, yeah. pretty early in the night? No, I, I, I mean, real, we're really happy about it. We got results from one end of the state to the other, and the trend is great everywhere, and uh, we're, we're delighted. Uh, we're confident about uh, all the projections that have come forward, and we're ready to roll up our sleeves, get to work. We'll have a big unity ra rally tomorrow, and uh, I might take a day off. <laughs> okay. Governor, as those of you back at home that heard the speech, you talked about unification. You talked about the things that the Republican Party has in common more than they do not. Ninety percent of people agree on things. Talk a little bit about that moving forward, how you're going to unify your party that really does disagree on, a, on quite a few things. Well, quite a few issues. I mean, primaries, particularly in a state that's predominantly Republican, are always about, you know, this on this edge and this on the other. But, you know, the concept of, of opportunity, limited government, uh, uh, giving people back money, investing in the necessities of life are, are common things. There's always a little something on the fringe here and something on the fringe there. And we, we want to hear from those people. We know it's important to them. What, we can, what can we do uh, to alleviate their concerns? But I think the voters tonight really spoke loudly about, you know, my job is I got to get stuff done. And particularly these last uh, three and a half years, there were times when uh, there was a lot of pressure on us, but the, the people of Idaho, my team, a lot of great people around the state of Idaho uh, did a lot of work, and I think it's reflected in the margins that you're seeing in this election. Um, Governor, your opponents, in particular Lieutenant Governor McGeehan, really pushed about your decision to do the stay-at-home order, shut down businesses, and uh, you know those types of things during the pandemic. Ultimately, what do you think separated the two of you in this vote? Well, I mean, the numbers uh, don't lie. We're we're the fastest recovering state of every state. We n nobody did better uh, post-pandemic than we did, and so uh, what we did is obviously reflected in the attitudes of the people of Idaho, of the job growth, of the income growth, of, of our academic success. Uh, in essence, uh, you know, nobody wanted kids out of school. It was the local districts that decided to keep people out of schools to make sure everybody was safe. So, you know, the, the model of letting local government make decisions and businesses make decisions, I think is reflected in in the margins that we're seeing tonight. Governor, what does it say about the future of the Republican Party in the state of Idaho? They had choices in this race. You and Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan, which very opposite ends of the Republican Party. You are conservative. She's conservative as well. What does it say about the future of the Republican Party and what Idahoans really want? Well, I would almost argue that she and I agree on a lot of things, just like I said up there a little bit ago. But in a primary, you have to highlight the differences between the candidates. And that's what she she tried to do and did. And But I think the vote reflects what the people of Idaho think. But I, I fully understand. I mean, Janice and I agree on limited government, on giving money back to the taxpayers, on individual liberty, on free enterprise. Uh, but it was some of, the, some of the things kind of on the edge that we disagreed about. Yeah. Well, Governor, of course, this isn't a done deal. You still have the general election to go through. Of course, Idaho is a vastly majority Republican state. Um, what will you focus on heading towards the general election? Well, of course, even though, even during the primary, you know, I was obviously concerned about the election, but I got to do my job. I got to continue to govern the state of Idaho. You know, we got things, you know, we're getting ready to, in a drought, to look at a fire year. Yeah. We've got a lot of money that, that the legislature appropriated in a lot of areas we need to make sure is done right. I'm going to, I think the best policy is the best politics. And I'm going to continue to try and implement good policy for the state of Idaho. 
what do you think would be different about what you've already done? What about those folks that didn't vote for you and are calling for change? What could you do differently to sort of address some of those questions and asks? Well, I'm always willing to, to listen to people. A, a lot of it is about things that are almost two years ago. But as I said, if you look at, we're the fastest recovery state of all the states. Um, our education attainment is going up. We're making investments. Our teachers are deciding that they want to stay here because of the investments we made. I am very proud of all those things. I'm proud of the money we're putting into roads. Now I want everybody to be a little cautious. There's going to be some or orange cones out there, and we're going to have to do some of these projects. But I'm very proud of what I, with a lot of the legislators that are in this room, what we got done, I got to implement them. And I hope those people will look at results uh, rather than rhetoric. Governor, I know a lot of people want to talk to you tonight. Congratulations. And of course, we'll continue to follow this over the next four or five months as we get closer to right. the general election. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Governor. Acting or current governor is what the word I meant to say. Is there a Governor Brad Little running for a third term or second, second term? Second term. <laughs> He's been it's an getting office. late yes, in the night. It is second getting late. Terms. Second term. And so it was good to have some time with him, and uh, we'll send it back to the that studio. Was the, this yeah, time that, we should mention that was the earliest race that was called, projected by the Associated Press. We're watching, as Joe and Brian had talked about, um, watching the Attorney General race very closely. The other statewide races: Secretary of State, Superintendent of Public Instruction. Uh, lieutenant governor's race yeah. and what this effectively means is because lieutenant governor Janice McGeehan was running for governor she is no longer lieutenant governor so her seat is vacated she gave that up Priscilla Giddings vying for that speaker of the house Scott Betke yeah. vying for that as well of course still has six months to serve in mm -hmm. that seat right. until January but interesting all of the top leaders that we've spoken to here at the Idaho um, GOP party tonight all of them and we've asked every one of them yeah. about the rift in the Republican Party and they all have their talking points they apparently do. because they all say we agree on 80 percent at least and then we'll figure out the rest right saying that they have more in common than not um, we're going to check in with some other candidates watch these results roll in and try to get some reaction from them but for now we're going to send it back to you guys in the studio